What's up, y'all? Welcome to LA Fixers, coming at you from the Co-Create Studios. Um, today, we're going to be talking about some off-market opportunities, obviously, and we're going to be talking to um, a top producer. You may know her as um, the agent with the million-dollar smile and uh, Los Angeles Magazine 2022 all-star, Christine Agopian. What's up? Hey, good morning. Thanks for having me. Uh, the pleasure is all ours. We're really happy you finally made it here. Um, so besides real estate, I bet you are going to guess what we have in common besides real estate. Come on, you got this. I know you got this. What, you think you're a chef? Um, no, I don't you think like I'm a chef. Eat? No, I do like to eat, but that's not what we have in common. What's Come on, common? think, think. Our friends, we have kids. Uh, yes, I'll homes. give you a hint. All right. our, our fathers. Oh, no. I am not Jewish. I know. But your dad was? Born in Israel. Yes. Are you asking me? Yes. Your dad was born in Israel, just like my dad. He loves talking about this. I do. One of my favorite topics. All right. Let's talk about your worst transaction of all time, your nightmare transactions. Just give us a little tiny oh, piece man. of it. So many. Um, not really. Uh, but it does happen. Um, I, I think I just lived through one. Okay. I, I made it through. Um, it was a commercial building, which is not my, it is not my thing. I don't do it often, but it was a client that I love that I've sold a lot of properties for. I took it on we fell off. We fell out of escrow five times, um, in the course of a year mm -hmm. and we just fought through it, fought through it. Um, we had tenant disasters, um, just, you know, buyer nightmares, all kinds of surprises that we didn't expect. We pulled through. My seller was awesome. He was on board with me. Um, so it happened, but it was definitely not easy, you know. Who was the most nightmare uh, person in the whole transaction? Tenants who have more rights than all of us. Was there one specific tenant? Yes. <laughs> really? There was two that were being, you know, very difficult towards the end, last day, closing day. Okay. Where we're all, you know where we think we're closing and we're all going to shake hands and walk away, have a drink. Um, we found that the tenant was still there, wow. sort of demanded a nice um, 30K check or he wouldn't move. Wow. I couldn't close. Interesting. Um, so we actually did know about that. Everybody was really mad at me, of course. It's of always course. my fault. Um, so Leo and I did know about that and we wanted to surprise you. That tenant is here. Come on in. No, of course he's not. But I, from what I hear, it is a pleasure working with you. Like you're very pleasant. You're not. Of course I am. Yeah. I kind of well. like that idea though. I must say <laughs> we should just surprise agents with their nightmare tenants. Look, I yeah. like to, I want to have fun. I want to enjoy my clients. I want to, you know, I want it to be a happy transaction. It's always the goal. It doesn't always end up that way. Um, and, you know, to guide both sides as well as we can. And sometimes it doesn't go as planned. Yeah. So where do you uh, generate your business from? Where would you? Um, I want to say most of my business comes from my sphere. Um, okay. Everybody I know, I grew up here. This is my town, my church, my school, my college, my friends, my family. Um, I should be marketing outside my sphere, but I want to say giant bulk, definitely 75% comes from most people I know. Interesting. Chuck, give, give us your famous line about network. About network? Yeah, your network. You got to remind me, dude. Your network is your, your net, net worth. worth. <laughs> I, I wish I can take credit for it being my famous line, but I don't think it's my famous no, line. No, no, it's definitely true. I don't think people tap into it as much as they should 100%. or understand how much weight there is there. Yeah. Um, the stranger is not going to give you his business as fast as somebody who trusts you. Yeah. You know? So let me ask you this. What are your favorite apps that you like to use? Um, like for me, I'm on Zillow. I, I love Zillow. No, I don't love Zillow. Okay. It's not accurate. It's like a BS marketing site as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. Um, I mean, I do pull it up when I'm in a rush and I just want to see numbers. I prefer Redfin. Mm -hmm. Just because I could pull up, you know, dates sold, all the previous information much faster. Okay. And I feel like they have more accurate numbers when people are, you know, they think they want to see what their home is worth. They'll go to Zillow. That's yeah. like that's the bullshit. number one There's place. Do yeah. not go there. Yeah. yeah. Zestimate is not. I didn't know you were going to be talking shit about Zillow. So Sorry. this is weird because the CEO of Zillow is here. Come on in. Man. 
That's okay. You should see what it says about his own house. Do you know the story, right? Oh my God, yes. I forgot yeah, about his that. His estimate is way off on his own house. You know, they just changed the estimate on uh, Mar-a-Lago. Did you know that? No. With this whole fraud From thing like with Trump. 200 million or something. To, to 18 like, million yeah. or something, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, every day there's another number. But you could go on five different sites and you're going to have five different, you know, people think it's an appraisal and they want to screenshot it to me. And I'm like, this is not how it works. Yeah. You know, there are real comps. That's what the appraiser, that's what the bank looks at. They're not checking Zillow. We've done a bunch of content, right, Lior, with uh, Zillow stuff. It's like, hey, Zestimate says this. Okay. Zestimate has a freaking algorithm. Zestimate cannot. Uh, we actually just did a video with Haley. We're like, why is my Zestimate this? Well, you know, your neighbor could have a view and the Zestimate doesn't know that you don't have a view. And a Zestimate know? is not a property sold, closed. It's not a real number. It's, it's not even a real it's word. It's completely irrelevant. <laughs> it's not even a real word. So if you weren't um, doing real estate, what would you be doing? That's easy. Um, I would be in the kitchen cooking, eating, cooking. Eating and cooking, huh? Freaking. Like like a like a housewife? No. Okay. Clarify. Definitely not I'm, I'm, I'm asking because that's what it sounds like to somebody just listening. No, not right? barefoot in the kitchen. <laughs> um, just just cooking because it's sort of it's my hobby. It's my true love. Um, it's my zen zone. It's your I true love, love really. It, I love. I mean, Does your my, husband know about this? Because he's yeah, gonna absolutely. Say, he knows. There's okay. no competition. Do we have our husband here? <laughs> it's your husband's here. Come on in. <laughs> So I will ask you this because he was asking like a housewife, but I'm thinking more like a reality, you know, TV YouTuber kind of person. Uh, I think I don't you know. can pull I mean, it off. It sounds like a fun, romantic idea to do what you love, put it on TV and everything turns out great, but it's just so time consuming. You know, I've got little kids. I'm trying to have a successful business. I'm married. I'm trying to stay married. I'm trying to be a good mom. I'm trying to feed everybody. I'm also trying to stay married. <laughs> what do you mean? We're all trying to stay married. It doesn't just happen. <laughs> you know, I'm trying to be a good sister, a good daughter, and somehow, you know, be showered and look good. And uh, it's it's a lot of work. It, and one of your kids is in a cast. She's always in trouble. Today, she's in a cast. She's been in a cast uh, for six Sienna. weeks. Sienna. She's a, she's a little monkey, but she's okay. She's in good spirits. She'll be She'll be out of the cast hopefully tomorrow. Oh, nice. Okay, that's good. Let's uh, let's ask you this. I know we've 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 talked about this one before, but if I were to you know pick you up and drop you off in Middle America, Wyoming's or something, what would you do to get a deal? in, you know, within thirty, sixty, ninety days, what would you do to get your name? Um, people people wanting to work with you. You know, I'd probably show up to some community event. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not very religious, but maybe I'd go to church to meet people. Maybe I'll go to like a neighborhood meeting. Maybe I'll I'll go to any um, community event, sports, uh, just to meet people. You know, knocking on doors is great. It works for some people. I have never done that. You know, <laughs> some people have found success. However, I think meeting people and immersing yourself with in a real town, real people, real situations, kids, families, sports. And uh, people will just come to you, you yeah. Know, if you put yourself out there. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. Um, I feel like, you know, when when people are wanting to go back to the basics as far as generating business or whatever, you've got your door knocking, right? You got your cold calling, and you got your networking, right? Door knocking, you can really go anywhere. Literally, drive a neighborhood. You're like, oh, this is okay neighborhood let's see who wants to sell here you know then you've got your cold calling you you got to get those phone numbers from somewhere right and you got to make sure you're complying with the do not call list and you know this there's so much bullshit nowadays um it's not like how it was 10 15 years ago 20 years ago you can i mean you well, can that's because people get 100 calls a day they just want to hang up on you nobody wants to even listen i don't even pick up my phone anymore there you go like here here's a call coming in nope like, unless it's my kids, text me, yeah. email me, you know, DM me. Like, there's other means of communication and just call me and let's chat. What are we going to chat about? Unless we have a deal going on, right? Look, we have a deal? It, still, it still works. All these channels, you know, and you've got to exhaust all options in today's market. But for me, with limited time, 
you know, being a mom, I feel like just tapping into my network or call people, just say, hi, you haven't seen them in six months. Don't say, hey, do you want to move? Do you want to sell your house? But just say hello. Hey, I'm thinking about you. How is your family? And stop, you know? And how do you not come off like I'm asking for business? You definitely how don't do want to have like that commission breath or, you know, feel desperate. People feel that immediately. They're going to run the other way. So you don't even want to, I would not even talk about real estate. You know, I'll have somebody ask me, they know what I do. You know, I'm still in business. People know who I am. And if they have a question, they can come to me. I don't need to sign a contract, whether it's a family, a friend, someone on social media, you know, and, and just, just contribute, just do come from a good place, help them if they need help, you know, don't ask for anything in return. And if it's right, it, it'll happen, you know. And I feel like around. that's also such an important thing that people miss, even when they join organizations or networking opportunities, they're joining with the intention of going to get business. And when you go to places like that, people see right through it. But if you show up and all you're doing is trying to create a, a, a real relationship, people end up doing business with people they like and trust. It's hard because the intent, everybody works for money, right? We're not, we're not working for fun. We're not volunteers. But you have to just shift your intention and really think about, you know, how can I help my neighbor? How can I help my cousin? You know, right. not just this is a check and I'm really going to go for the kill. And then they feel like you're being pushy or people get uncomfortable and no one is going to trust that person, you know. That reminds me, Leo, I don't know if you remember, but there was a burnt house like a half burnt house that we were trying to buy. Is that me? And you were the agent on it. And you were just helping someone Wait, from your is church. is that the one in Winnetka yeah. over there? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you it were was, the agent It was uh, yeah. a school. We lost that one. We had person. the buyer. He got mad, too. He was like. Sorry, guys. Somebody yeah. got a really good deal. <laughs> but I remember you were trying to really help this person. I remember that's, that's why I wasn't upset. Because her intentions were really to be of service, really to help this person. And I was like, you know what? We're all just trying to put a deal I mean, together. Someone almost died in the house, you know, an elderly person. And I really just wanted to unload it and, and help them as much as possible. You know, that's not every situation. But again, it's really just to come from a good place and do your job. Yeah. Do you remember when you first, when that thought first came into your mind, you're like, I'm going to get licensed. Uh, yeah, I was getting hurt left and right because I thought everybody I knew was going to start calling me. You know, I got licensed. Here it is. Everyone's going to call me. And then everybody I know started buying homes and not calling me. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it, it was really upsetting. And then every time I talk to seasoned agents, they'll be like, just move on. Who cares? All good. You know, it'll happen again. There'll be more deals. Don't sit on that feeling, you know, just offer help anyway, even though they didn't give you the deal and they might be an escrow. If they ask you a question, just do good. And sort of that sort of stuck with me. And then eventually when you start having business, you're like, hey, it's not that bad. Moving on is way more important because yeah. there's a lot more deals, but you get stuck on something. Um, and I just feel like the more you come from a good place, people will see that and then it'll start naturally happening. Yeah, that reminds me. Yesterday, one of my dad's best friends calls me. He's like, hey, I saw this property that my client brought me. I'm thinking your client. Okay, what is it? He's like, it's a 16,000 lot. It's this, it's that. I'm like, okay, who's your client? He's like, my client is a broker. He brought me this deal. I'm like, okay, how can I help you? I'm like, What do you think? Should I do it? What do you think? What can I build on it? What's the zoning? I'm over here doing due diligence for this guy. Now, obviously, I could have told him, hey, have your broker do this. For you, like your broker has access to title, to Zemans, to whatever. But I didn't say that. I, this was an opportunity for me to show him that, hey, I can answer all these questions and I can give you maybe some information that you don't know because he's a contractor himself. He's like, how much does it cost? I'm like, you're a contractor. So you know prices sometimes fluctuate with lumber, with this, with that, right? Anyway, instead of saying, hey, listen, you mother, instead of going like, how are you going to call me to help you? you know, have somebody else represent you. I didn't do, I didn't take that route. I answered all his questions. And I said, by the way, if you're looking at this, I also have these two deals that are not even on the market. They're going to be coming on the market in the next couple of weeks. So if you want to see them before and you're not competing like this one that's listed, let me know. He's like, send them to me. So I send them both, the Macau and the Fredonia in Hollywood Hills. And he's like, I want to go see those. Those, those look better. I'm like, Whatever you want. Hey, I don't care. 
Yeah, just take the pressure off. Yeah. And there'll be other deals. You never know. His He might get into it with his agent, and then he's going to call the backup. So yeah. be ready to be in backup position. Yeah. And then he'll be ready for his next deal. You'll be the next call. But moving on, the most important thing, I moving think, on. for like newer agents. Yeah. Yeah. I remember also, I think a lot of people, when they get licensed, they're thinking, okay, as soon as I get licensed and I make this announcement, hey, I've joined. Your phone is going to ring off yeah. the hook and there's people going to knock on your door, sell my house. Yeah. It is not going to happen. It's not <laughs> happening. It's just, I feel like it. this market is already overly saturated with real estate people. Real estate has become. Everybody has, everyone's cousin, uncle, neighbor is an agent. It's the truth. Yeah. And, and think about it. It's like, it's become part of the culture, right? It's become part of the culture. I mean. I'm not just talking about, um, oops, sorry. That's okay. I'm not just talking about like real estate shows that there's 28 different real estate shows, property cousins, property sisters, property neighbors, property. Like, I'm not even talking about that. I'm talking about the different mixers, the different events. Like we went to, what did we go to uh, a couple of weeks ago? The sink. Uh, event. Yeah. The sink event. Oh yeah. Right. Millions of freaking people over there. They're all agents, you know, and, and they're all just there to mingle and they all know each other and they're all competing with each other and they're all friends and it's okay. It's a big social scene, I think, in our city. I'm sure it's not like that in middle America, you know, but this is a trend. Netflix, Bravo have done a really good job making our, making our lives look super glamorous. And it's not. So people get their license. They're like, yep, that's going to be me. I'm going to be shaking hands, you know, and raking in the money. And that is not the expectation is so different. And people are watching these shows. They're like, yeah, this could be me. Yeah. You know, I'm going to be a million dollar agent tomorrow when I get my license, this piece of cake, you know, so all we I all gotta get do lucky. Is, yeah. All I got to do is get licensed, right? Then I get the white Mercedes, right? Oh, Done. wait, I got to get a white Audi yeah. first. Okay. Then a white Mercedes, right? <laughs> get a tie. <laughs> yeah. Get a tie, you know. Go to these fancy events and boom, you're a star. But I think they get into it. A whole year goes by and they're, you know, zero dollars later. You're like, you what have get- I been doing? Wait a second. What have I been doing? I've been going to open houses. Great. What are you doing at these open houses? Looking for free drinks. Right. <laughs> you know, you is that what it's come to? You an alcohol problem yes. and less money in the bank. Is that what it's come to? I've, I've met many agents that are, um, that really think it's going to be just handed to them. Well, and it's because nobody is showing you, you know, putting out the signs in the rain or staying behind or your escrow canceling over and over again, your clients firing you, you know, all the crap that nobody sees, all the hours that we put in at night, it doesn't just happen. You know, you don't just get a listing because some, it just, you know, God want, you know, it doesn't happen that way. So a lot of people don't see all the legwork, the sweat, the tears and the nights that go into the work. Shout out to uh, Haley's podcast, keeping it real estate. Hey. Because that's what this is about. It's about people going through this journey. It's not just the people that are already bawling out of control and they have a million listings and they're just counting money. It's the people that are actually going out there and knocking on doors and getting doors, you know, slammed in their face. And um, it's a, it's it's the journey. It's the journey. Yeah, we're not highlighting that. You know, if I get fired from a listing, I'm not putting. I'm not creating a post for that. You know, you're not going to see that. You know, <laughs> when I'm crying at home in my robe, I'm not. I'm not going to talk about that. I'm not going to talk about my lows. I'm going to highlight my highs. And then everybody sees that. It's like a but gambler. A they it, only talk know? about their wins. They never talk yeah. about their losses. No, but you walk into Vegas and you're only hearing the machines that are actually winning. You're not hearing all the, the losers crying the losers on their way out. <laughs> uh, Timmy's not going to college. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, um, you know, it's funny because Instagram, obviously we're only putting our stories, our highlights, right? So happy for my sellers. So happy for my buyers yeah, represented. I both, did this. You know, Look at me. Sure. You know, no one's like, um, you know, my listing expired today and they didn't <laughs> want to renew it or, you know, so-and-so I just. I feel like the first person that does end up doing that is going to really go viral. Because we don't see real. We see fake and everybody knows that we only see fake. Well, people want to be, people are attracted to happy things, you know, and they don't want to see something somber or sad, someone crying, complaining. But you can but yeah, learn. Let's, let's talk about what's real. Even the top producers, everybody you think that's a hot shot, you know, making millions of dollars a year, they have giant losses, you know, and they go through the same things, but people are not looking at that. So... And sometimes you learn the best from the loss. Absolutely. I, I mean, think those are the best lessons. It's true. 
yeah, you get better, you move on. Name of the game. I think we should start a new show, Losers in Real Estate. <laughs> no. No. Not a good idea. No. Okay. Scratch that. <laughs> Don't delete. call Scratch me. It. Don't that. call me either. I'm not hosting it. <laughs> Welcome to Losers in Real Estate. <laughs> Who do I we will have give here you, today? I'll give you a few numbers. <laughs> yeah? <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, so um, what else do we need to cover here today? I don't know. What, what's uh, your, did what, you I didn't her? bring did you any food. I didn't cook or bake a cake for you this morning. I'm sorry. Maybe next time, if you invite me, I will. But um, we didn't want to call you out on it. But since you are, so, yeah. I actually bring food myself. I cook the food the day before, oh, and I bring it here you. for lunch for me and Lior. That's awesome. Yeah, he feeds me well. Yeah, salads, um, chicken, chicken. Yes. Did you tell her about the? Uh, prank you did on the agency last week no the turn off team <laughs> oh so we had uh nicole tequila here yeah, yeah. So i didn't see it i saw her so well, it, it hasn't aired yet yeah oh, it hasn't, it hasn't aired. but we basically i was like hey let's let's call some agents and see who's hungry enough to show me a property at two in the morning that's the only time i can see it you know so I called all these agents. Agents are like, yeah, no, yeah, no, I have kids. No, I can't. No, I can't. I can't Most I can't. of them didn't even pick up the phone to begin yeah. with. Yeah. Okay. And it was really nice. The ones that I did get to speak with, I'm like, hey, I'm a doctor. My wife's a nurse. We Our shift ends. We have a graveyard. The shift ends at 2 a.m. It's a property across the street from the hospital at Cedar sinai We want to buy it. It's vacant. Can you show it to us at 2.15 in yes. the morning? Nobody said yes. But then Nicole said, you know what? You should call Steven from our team. He'll do it. She's like, he's so nice. Like, he, he, he won't say no. Anyway, so we call him, and he's like, okay, I'll show you the no property. Way. I was like, oh, my God, are you serious? He's this like, is yeah. why he's a rock star. He's a rock star. And I said, you know, there's a there's a bakery across the street. You can just wait there for us, you know. He's like, okay. You know, I wanted to be like, hey, can you get me some coffee, too? We're tired after work. <laughs> Poor Steven. But, uh, <laughs> but then we told him, we gave him a shout out. We're like, you, you know. Don't you're doing big things, you know, big things happen from these little, little decisions. You know, I, everybody wants to be sleeping at two in the morning, right? Yeah. You got to say yes. That's another thing yeah. to say. Yes. Don't turn it down. Even if you think it's not real. Um, but you and I both know that you and I both would say no. I mean, yeah, I'm not going to wake up. <laughs> I'm not going to wake up at two. Depends. It depends. If it's your, you know, your first couple months in the biz, you might say yes. You might say yes. Uh, you're, you're, you evolving. Say yes. you're evolving. You're evolving. I had one guy who was trying to close me on seeing it before work at 6 p.m. He's like, how bad do you want this house? I'm like, oh, yeah, he gave you bad. a whole sales pitch. I'm that, like, Dude. that was slick. Yeah, it was pretty slick. I know who that agent is. I should give him a shout out because he was he was kind of smart about how he I get weird requests. And some, it all depends on the person. If you respect them. And your mood. They are. And your mood at the moment. Yeah, but it's hard. Nobody wants to do it 8 a.m. on a Sunday. Like, don't. That's not cool. I'd rather do 2 a.m. on a Tuesday than 8 yeah, a.m. on no, a Sunday. You get that request and they look at you like, you know, like you're not doing your job and you're like, have some respect. I'm not going to show you this house at 8 a.m. When people tell time. me, when people tell me they want me to show them something like Saturday morning at 7 or 8 a.m., I tell them, sorry, I go to temple. And if they want me to show them something like Sunday at 7 or 8 a.m., I'm like, sorry, I go to church. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, that's just my, that's just Look, my go-to. It go all to. depends on who it is. If it's a random person asking for a showing, the answer is always no. If it's somebody you've worked with before and you know it's real, I may just do it if I'm in the mood, you know, money, it's a money call. You just get up and do it. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> what else do we need to cover? Do we need to cover anything else? Like what's know. your, what's you your, tell me, I don't know. What, what am I? What, what, give us, give us some, you know, t like if you were to start as a brand new agent today, and you know everything that you know as a seasoned agent, what is the first thing that you would implement into your business? Um, I would, instead of knocking on doors or spending money on flyers, door hangers, which they tell you to do all those things, which are great if you have a giant budget, I would be calling everybody I know and just you know telling them, hey, you know, this is what I do now. If you need help, let me know. Um, also, just be involved in school. You know, if you're a parent, go to that soccer game or just host an ice cream event. Do like something really small that doesn't cost money. Just immerse yourself in the community. Um, so you would lean on the networking side of the business. 100%. I mean, it's not going to come to you. You have to go I'm, out and get it. I'm going to do a quick plug here because I think I'd like to echo that. Okay. But I will also say that 
um, as agents um, or as a builder, contractor, roofer, electrician, whatever, whoever's watching this, you are going to meet people that um, are thinking of selling their property, okay? Um, now, if you're an agent and that property is off market and it's not being listed yet, bring it to me first because this is what we do off market opportunities, especially if it's a development, if it's a construction play, expand, you know, multifamily play, commercial, bring it to us, bring it to me, bring it to Rubbing Elbows, LA Fixers, and we will get way more exposure to the right buyer than you could, you know, especially in a short amount of time, okay? So that would be one thing. If you're a contractor or builder or whatever, and you know somebody who wants to sell and it's not something you want to buy, bring it to Christine and she will, you know, bring you in. She will, you know, you know, coordinate the sale, make money on the sale, include you one way or another if it's, uh, you know, bringing you to continue the job that you are going to give a bid on. Um, I've done that a few times. I've paid roofers a lot of money over the years. You know, roofer goes to an appointment, it's going to be $22,000. Oh, my God, I don't know if I should put this money in. Like, I'm thinking of selling the house. Are you thinking of selling the house? I'm going to have Chuck call you. Then I call them. I close them. And I still bring the roofer to do the job at some point, either to the new buyer or, you know. Or neighbors. This is a big thing. Neighbors. Neighbors. So if they don't know who you are, they don't know you sell homes, you know, I can't tell you how many times I saw a sign go up on my street and I'm like, damn it, this could have been me. They don't even know I'm an agent. You Secret know, agent. Brand new, brand new agent. And I never spoke to any of my neighbors, you know, typical. I'm in, I'm out. I don't see anybody. And then one day there was a moving truck uh, on my street. I was a brand new agent. And my husband actually pushed me. He goes, go and just go see what's going on. So it was a couple getting a divorce. And I had never met her before. After seven years of living there across the street, and I said, hey, what's going on? Are you guys moving? She said, yeah, we're moving. And that was the end of it. I said, oh, I'm an agent. You know, I was kind of like really shy. I'm an agent. If you need anything, bye. Walk back to my house. Um, three months later, she left a handwritten note in my mailbox. Hi, Christine. I met you on the street. Um, I'm getting a divorce. Call me. I need to sell my house tomorrow. And I'm like, I have the note. I couldn't believe that. Just me saying hello or walking over there, you know, um, yeah, she left a note in my mailbox and, and I couldn't believe it. I sold that house twice. Uh, wow. <laughs> yeah. But it's, you know, let, let your neighbors know you sell homes, you know, they trust you, you know, the neighborhood, you know, everybody there. It's, it's a really yeah. big deal. It's like Michael Jordan said, you're going to miss 100% of the shots you don't take. You don't take, take it. 100. Yeah. But you know what? I'm going to start soliciting on Tinder. Hey, did you just recently get divorced? <laughs> <laughs> Listen, talk to the divorce attorney in your neighborhood. You know, right. find find a lawyer. Tell them, give me some tips. I don't know. There's a million things you can do. No, but I love that story because it, it just goes to show that you got to put yourself. I out was there. embarrassed. And I was you embarrassed have... to go there and be nosy. And sure enough, she needed she needed me. She was so appreciative, right. and here I was, just embarrassed to go say hi. Right. And, um, and you can't get discouraged when it doesn't happen because you can go to 10. You, you may have got lucky yep, the first person you went to. I sold it to a developer and then I sold it again to another family. And so that one, uh, you know, that two minute chat turned into three sales, both sides. Wow. Yeah. So, yeah, it pays. Go say hello to your neighbors. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's I lucrative. Th <laughs> I think if you're shy, if for, for, for anybody out there who's a little bit shy, I'm a little bit more like outgoing, like I don't have a problem talking to anybody, right? But a lot of people don't have that comfort level. And I think what all you need to do is change your intentions on what you're going to say, right? If, you're, if you know you're going out there to try to get a deal going, then you're, you're almost afraid to be seen for that at like face value of what you're doing, you're get, like getting caught, like trying to get business. But if you're going out there just as a neighbor, just as a human being, hey, I live right over there. Just wanted to say hello. Oh, okay. Hey, everything okay? Do you need any help with anything? That's it. You know? Just don't ask for business. Yeah. You know, just just be yourself, and then eventually it'll come to you. Yeah. You know? So why don't you tell uh, people where they can find you on social media, your email, your All fax right. number? I am not so great at this, okay? My social media is not... Uh, well, no, no, I've got Instagram. It's Christina Gopian, my name. Uh, Facebook is Christina Gopian, although I'm not very active. Um, LinkedIn is Christina Gopian, not active there either. Yeah, at least yeah. you're pretty big consistent. Whammies, <laughs> big whammies. I do not, I am not on YouTube for 
Really? Any, for any reason. Okay. Yet. I should Yet. be. I should be. Okay. Everybody should be. I do need some help there. I was posting more and then I got lazy. I got busy. Life happens and I stopped. But I definitely need to start, you know, scheduling more and, and being consistent with social media. I forget to post some things and then it's you know, where it's, people see you. It's really important, first of all, to remember that all of us are constantly scrolling. Yeah. constantly scrolling. It's a problem. It's an addiction we don't really want to talk about, but we're all constantly scrolling. We're it's at the lights. Social dilemma. <laughs> you know? So um, it's good to be on people's feed, uh, on people's feeds and, and to be relevant to them. So if you've got a silly s- story or a cooking story or something with your kids or something, oh, I'm closing a property or just, you know, neutralize a nightmare situation with... As long as people kind of know what you're up to, you know. I think not last year, the year before, I think just posting off markets or just making, you know, I'm visiting at home, posting it. I don't, I can't tell you how many calls I got. I got to meet people that I didn't even know were shopping for homes. I easily closed like 10, 15 million from, from Instagram posts that I didn't even know who I was targeting. I wasn't targeting anybody. I was just creating random content of like a kitchen I thought was nice. And somebody will say, hey, what is that? Is it off market? And sure enough, you show up the next day and things really happen. So yeah, that's a lesson for me to just keep doing what I was doing or not to fall off that track because people are watching you. They want to see what you're doing. One thing I want to say is that agents and a lot of agents do this with me. I don't know if you if if you've noticed it, but all I do is post off market inventory, right? You see, yeah. duplex in Santa Monica, you know, duplex in it's all off market opportunities. Now, what I do is I post it, and if it says off market, I tell all my agent friends, "Hey, just go ahead and screen shoot it and sure. repost it," because you may know a buyer. Don't just be like, oh, Chuck has all these off market. No, you may know a buyer for this off market. So screen, you know, screenshot it or reshare it. And then if somebody reaches out to you and says, hey, what do you know about this deal? I'm interested. Then you can make the connection. Then you can reach out to me and say, hey, I've got a bite. I got a, you know, possibly a buyer who's interested. Then we can possibly put the deal together. We've done this. We do this all the time. We work with agents all the time. So that's something you need to remember as an agent. One, tag yourself in the off market post. And two, Send the off-market opportunities that you get your hands on to us. Uh, and with that, I think uh, I think we're done, right? I think so for today. Do you have a fax number you can share with people since I, you don't I, use YouTube? I don't have a fax. No? You can okay. email me. It's christine.agopian at Compass. It's all, on my, uh, it's all on my Instagram. That's all I got. But you will find me. Just Google it. Where's your like prime, prime neighborhood that you feel like the most comfortable in and that you've done the most business in that you're um, like, this is my backyard? I want to say I like to stay close to home. So I'm in the valley. Anything from Studio City, Sherman Oaks, Encino. Encino is really my base. So Encino. I will do business anywhere, but that's really my home. You'll you know. do business anywhere? That's really nice. Because I, mean, I just got a lease in Simi Valley. I want you to no, go show don't this call pro- me. No? no Barstow. <laughs> No Modesto. <laughs> okay, but if you are not an agent, or if you're not, uh, if you're not a top producer, um, and you maybe get yourself a listing in Studio City, Sherman Oaks, uh, Tarzana, whatever, and you want someone on your team to maybe co-list it with, reach out to Christine and uh, do a couple of deals together. This is what it's all about. We're rubbing elbows, you know. Have We're doing some fun. yeah. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thanks, guys, for having me. Um, second time's a charm. Second. Yeah, it's your second time here. (laughs) I'm getting better at this. Yeah. And uh, please have her on your podcast. Look how pleasant she is. Make sure to catch us next time on LA Fixers, on YouTube, on Rubbing Elbows, on Instagram, on where else? Everywhere. Facebook, everywhere, Facebook groups. Um, And thank you again for joining us, Christine Agopian. Thank you. See you next time. (laughs) 